for the first eight, nine years. Uh, and then I started to have more and more relapses and we decided that I was probably building an antibody against the Avonex. Uh, my doctor took me off of Avonex and wanted to try me on Copaxone, a different type of drug. And I did not tolerate Copaxone. Um, I had severe reactions, uh, um, injection site reactions, uh, pain that would last for weeks. And I had to do this uh, injection every day, so I decided I just could not put myself through this anymore, so I quit the Copaxone, and that was the last uh, FDA MS endorsed drug that I've been on. Nobody ever thought about the possibility, what if a drug comes along that would challenge, challenge the existing expensive drugs that are already on the market? Uh, what pharmaceutical company would want to threaten its own line. He said, do you know, you know how much money it takes to get a drug through clinical trials and approved by the FDA? I says, no, but I, I bet it's a lot. He says, it's probably over a billion dollars now. He said, let me ask you a question. If you were a businessman and you invested hundreds of millions of dollars in a product and when it came out, it didn't do what it was supposed to do. It had horrible side effects. And then you found something that was cheap and easy. Would you switch from your product to that cheap and easy product without any side effects? That efficacious product? And lose all of your money? I don't think you would. And it becomes a point of competition, and I think when they look at that, uh, that you're using a very cheap drug such as LDN, and you're taking away from a pharmaceutical uh, drug where there's a lot more money involved, you're going to see more irritation or friction from the conventional community. She sees low-dose naltrexone as a people-powered drug, and, and it is. It's, it's a grassroots drug because the system still doesn't really want it for a variety of reasons. I just, uh, I feel I was very disappointed with my neurologist. Um, I, I brought her printed literature on LDN. She would not, she never even acknowledged receiving it. I know for a fact that she received it. I just feel that she, she's my doctor. She works for me. She's supposed to be taking care of me. And yet she, was not willing to even even look at or read the information that I brought to her about the medication that I wanted to try. We have to remember that 50% of the medications that are in the PDR are prescribed for off-label uses. I don't need no stinking double-blind study to know that this stuff works. I was reading Lancet not long ago, and I think this statement's very true. If everything has to be double-blinded, randomized, and evidence-based, where do new ideas come from? Really, what I want, if I believe this drug works, which I do, is that everybody who gets a diagnosis of MS goes on it. Just like everybody who gets a diagnosis of cardiovascular disease gets aspirin. Everyone here is a risk taker. Anyone who decides to go on the drug, anyone who decides to dispense it, anyone who decides to prescribe it, we're all taking risks. We're sticking our necks out, but we know why. I haven't given myself um an injection once a week for the past nine years, um, and then having to give myself an injection every day, <laughs> and having severe uh, reactions to both injections, and to, to continue to have disease progression, I decided I had had enough. And when I heard of something so simple and so inexpensive as LDN, and something that could possibly stop the progression of my disease as well as maybe improve my symptoms and cost pennies compared to what I had been paying, it was a no-brainer. 
And I decided at that point in my disease progression that I was going to go for it. And I think if um, big corporations support something, they're very biased. And we all know that to be true. And there's a quote floating around out there with my name on it that this is a no-brainer. This is such a no-brainer. Uh, even you scientific types, with all of the biases that are introduced here, discounted by 50%, tell me a drug that treats MS that has 40-some-odd percent of the patients with no exacerbation. Tell me one drug, please educate me. 71% of their lives improved. How many drugs do you know for, I don't care what the diagnosis is going to be, how many drugs do you know improve 71% of the people's, of the population's lives? Improved? But I'm encouraged enough by the story of the two Australian doctors who most of you will probably remember, who discovered the cause of peptic ulceration uh, when they found the, uh, the bacteria H. pylori in the stomach years ago. And nobody believed them, particularly the gastroenterologists at the time didn't. And uh, they, they really were despised for quite a long time by most of their medical colleagues. But they were right all the time. They stuck to their guns. And, you know, 30, 40 years later, they've been acknowledged. He said, anyway, he said in 1540, the hardest thing in the world to do is bring about a change in a society. Everybody will be against you, especially those with a vested interest in the status quo, who have lived for a long time with tried and tested ways, or who have something to lose. And I'm afraid he might well be, have been talking about LDN. If we were all really as human as we pretend to be, we would all cry. More people could not be allowed in because we were at full capacity. Um, as Cindy said, the passion reflected here by people who came from all over, from California, from Ireland and England and every part of the United States to be here, we're talking people who had been helped by low-dose naltrexone, uh, is part of this people thrust that has brought low-dose naltrexone forward. Another fine conference, if you weren't here you missed it, sorry about that, this is the next one we're hoping will be over on the West Coast. If it is, great. If not, well, somebody stand up and help us out. Take care. Cut. <laughs>